Welcome to this video from Lynn Electrics. Today we will look at exposed and extraneous conductive parts. What are they? What are the dangers? And what can we do to make it safer? In part 2 of BS7671 we will find the definitions for exposed and extraneous parts. So let's put these into practical terms. If we start with exposed conductive parts the definition section tells us that these are conductive parts of electrical equipment which can be touched, is not normally live, but can become live during an electrical fault. Here we have shown a fluorescent light fitting. The casing is made of metal so it is conductive. In normal fault free conditions this casing is at zero volts and touching it will not give you an electric shock. But during a fault, let's say the live conductor works loose and touches the casing. Until the fuse blows or the breaker trips, the casing will be at 230 volts. Touching it now is likely to give you an electric shock. Here are two more examples of exposed conductive parts, a metal clad socket and an electric cooker. Both have electricity going to them and both have outer metallic parts that are normally at zero volts that may become live during a fault. Extraneous conductive parts are defined as those things that are not part of the electrical installation. They are generally at earth potential because of how they are positioned or constructed and they can contribute to voltage differences during electrical faults in other parts of the installation. Because of their earthy connection, for example in the ground, they can act as a zero point for electric shocks. Other examples of extraneous or earthy parts are shown here and typical of domestic installations. For example, a gas meter, water pipes and a central heating radiator. Here we have shown the differences side by side. Take a moment to look at this chart. The main thing to take away from this is that exposed conductive parts have electricity going to them, extraneous parts do not. And at the bottom we have included again the examples of each type and it is the earthy nature of these extraneous parts that introduces the danger. How might we have a dangerous situation? We have an example here where there is no fault on the installation. Everything is okay. Our man Eric is pottering about in his garage. He decides to plug in his radio and leans over to plug it in. As he does this, he is also touching the water pipe with his other hand. We do these things without thinking. The water pipes go into the ground and so they are regarded as earthy or zero volts potential. As there is no fault, the socket casing is also at zero volts. Both hands are at zero volts, no problem, no electric shock. Let us now introduce a fault. As Eric leans across to the electrical socket, it suddenly develops a fault. The socket casing becomes live and his hand is in contact with 230 volts. His other hand is on the earthy water pipe at zero volts. There is now a path for electrical current to flow right through Eric's chest. There is 230 volts difference between his two hands and Ohm's law tells us that a current will flow. Poor Eric, he gets a whopper and an electric shock. If we had a bonding cable between the socket and the water pipe, things can be a lot different. We have positioned the earth clamp here where we can fit it on the slide. The same fault as before, the socket casing becomes live whilst Eric is plugging in his radio. Look what happens to the 230 volts. The 230 volts travels along the bonding cable and appears at the water pipe, making the water pipe 230 volts as well. 
So what have we got? One hand on the socket casing at 230 volts, the other hand on the water pipe also at 230 volts. A little arithmetic, 230 minus 230 equals zero volts. There is therefore no voltage difference across Eric's body. Ohm's law tells us that if there is no voltage difference, then there cannot be any current flowing. Try it on a calculator. Zero divided by any number you choose will always be zero. If there is no current, then there is no electric shock. We have shown this example as a supplementary bonding conductor, but it is exactly the same sequence of events if it was a main protected bonding conductor through the earth bar or the main earth terminal in the consumer unit. 230 volts travelled from the point of fault to all the connected metalwork in the property. Everything rises to 230 volts. And then, just as quickly, the fuse blows and everything drops back down to zero volts and a condition of safety. Just to reiterate what we have said, 230 volts appears on each hand during the fault because Eric was touching the water pipes and the socket casing when the fault occurred. 230 minus 230 equals zero volts, so there is no voltage difference across Eric's body. No voltage difference means no current. Eric is safe. Fractions of a second later, the fuse blows and everything becomes zero volts, a condition of safety. Think about this then. Three or four pigeons fly towards a 30,000 volt electricity pylon and land on one of the conductors. Both feet are at 30,000 volts. What is the difference between their feet? 30,000 minus 30,000 gives zero volts. The pigeons do not get an electric shock. And we know this because five minutes later they fly off completely unharmed. A quick recap then. Exposed conductive parts are metallic parts of electrical equipment that are exposed to touch and might become live during a fault. Extraneous conductive parts are those metallic parts of non-electrical equipment that might be at earth potential or earthy and could contribute to a dangerous situation during a fault in the electrical installation. Main bonding or supplementary bonding will help to maintain all metalwork in the premises or area at the same potential, say 230 volts. That is until the fuse blows or the breaker operates and then they all drop down to zero volts. If both hands are at 230 volts, the voltage difference is zero volts. At zero volts, a current cannot flow through the body. Choosing the correct size of bonding conductor is the subject of another video from Learn Electrics. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video from Learn Electrics and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. We are always publishing new tech tips videos on electrical subjects and if you click the subscribe button below you will be sure not to miss the next one. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.